Dick Crispo is an artist, teacher, ethnologist, and historian. He has, in fact, become a Monterey Peninsula institution. Dick Crispo has exhibited internationally, earning 36 awards, 7 to 8 one-person shows, and is represented in over 30 public collections. Dick speaks of his work in this way. I am an abstract journalist of the landscapes and a choreographer of the dance of the mind. Well, I got a grant from the California Arts Council for Artists and Social Institutions grant. And because I was familiar with working in various social institutions, I understood the process of a, of a, of a prison, of a drug programs, of psychiatric institutions, whatever. Anyway, so that, gave, uh, that made me uh, feel a little more at home with the structure, even though the structure could be very stifling. I understood there was reasons for it. I, uh, I, the grant was to paint a, a mural down the corridor. The corridor is a quarter mile long, but I, when you paint on both sides, it becomes, and connect it like I did, it becomes a half a mile long. So the mural is a half a mile long. One of the former wardens of, of Soledad uh, uh, became director of corrections, and he wanted that, the corridor was always so ugly that he wanted it painted and cheered up. And uh, at any rate, I was, I applied for the job, uh, the grant, and got the grant to, to as a social, as artist and social institution, worked with a different warden uh, and was there uh, from uh, 1979, late 79 through 1980. We did it in a, over a period of 10 months. We had the first pay numbers in the Department of Corrections for artists. We had 10 paid artists and a couple days a week we painted on the mural, but we had to have it done in 10 months. The grant ran out in 10 months. And there, there was uh, a lot of other restrictions around it because of being inside the maximum security part of the prison at that time. Now they build another prison behind it where they put the maximum security. But at that time, it was the maximum security part of the prison. So, but I also had 10 pe volunteer inmates because they could get out, be on, on the line and doing work. All my men were exempt from lockdowns if they weren't part of the problem so they could keep working and everybody else was locked down. And they had early showers. Now, early showers in the prison is very important because you get a warm shower. You don't have a cold shower, which you would, which would get if you got to the shower too late. My men, had some had art experience, some didn't have any. Some of them were there for murder. Some of them were there for, for uh, uh, multiple, multiple accounts of... of of uh, conning and thievery and stuff, but they were mo mostly mostly men that were there for murder. Most of my men uh, were made up of uh, Chicano and uh, Afro Americans, and uh, and then a couple of Gringos, and then a couple of Gringos from motorcycle gangs. Uh. I had I had a great group of guys. Uh, subject matter? Did you have that planned uh, out beforehand? Yeah, well, the subject, everything had to be in the grant. I mean, you had to tell everything you're going to do with this grant. The grant, the, the subject matter was anything outside the prison that wasn't racial, political, or gang related, for obvious reasons. And, and then I proposed it to be very abstract and colorful. And because the floor is not even, because the floor was made so that the guards could see all the way down, so it has different levels to it. And these crash gates electronically opened and closed in the middle of it to seal off sections in the case of a riot. So my, my subject matter was to, they had the East Corridor and the West Corridor, so I put the West Corridor, I reversed it. I put America, starting with the East Corridor and the West Corridor in the East, from the East. So I had to start off with the Empire State Building and New York themes going across. And then at the, and then in the East Corridor, we had the uh, the other end. We we had uh, things from uh, California, McDonald's and things like that. But all these things were done in a very abstract, simplified, bright colors, much much the way I've gone back to working again. And it was it was an abstracted way because it was rhythms. 
and I it was a rhythms in the wall. And because the nature of a prison is to enclose, tightly enclose you, I wanted the wall to breathe and be open. So we didn't cover the whole wall, we ran through the wall. We used 48 uh, uh, gallons of, uh, of fine art acrylic, Polytech fine art acrylic, the Mexican acrylics, and we, and we used 53 gallons of uh, sealer. So it took two months to finish. No, it took ten months, uh -huh. but I, we did it. We had a, we had a banquet for it. We had a big party, and uh, friends and relatives of mine were invited in, and we had a big banquet for it. And they closed the corridor off, and we could boy, well, they could walk the corridor and see it. And the guys had their own. We had a band and everything for it. It was it was a big breakthrough in in, in corrections because it allowed people who weren't in the crafts program per se. To make money, but uh, but to make official money, to be paid twenty-seven dollars a month, or you know, and if they were a clerk, and then later I hired when I went to work for them as the first California artist facilitator under Jerry Brown, to uh, to uh, to make uh, uh, make make a, a, a weekly salary for artwork. Yeah, that's... that was a big deal. And uh, had never been had not been done before, and then later that led to me becoming the first artist facilitator for the state of California under Jerry Brown, and under uh, Jerry Brown we were able to expand the program, and uh, I trained a lot of the original six or other artist facilitators, and we trained them at Soledad and at uh, uh, because Soledad had three levels of prisons. Had a medium, a maximum, and a minimum. Down at the front was the minimum. Down there in the camp.